Today I want to show you how to crochet this really fun, interesting double crochet disc cloth. It's made with all double crochet except for the single crochet border and it's really fun to make and it's very dish clothy. <laughs> I really like the yarn that I used for this project. So what I used was two skeins of paint box yarns, recycled cotton worsted. This color is meadow green and I believe this creamy color is called string. I've made a couple of these for my kitchen using different colors, so I will post pictures of those here as well. Dish cloths are great for your kitchen because, like, who wants to go keep buying paper towels? <laughs> dish cloths are great to wash your counters, to wash your dishes, to dry your dishes, and just to make your kitchen have a little extra style. You can pick colors to match your kitchen, or you can create these as a gift for someone else and you can use neutral colors or to match their kitchen as well. So without further delay, let's crochet. As I said previously, you will need two skeins of paint box yarns recycled cotton worsted, or you can use one skein if you just wanna use one color and no stripes. Um, if you don't have this yarn on hand or you just wanna use a different yarn, you can use any 100% cotton yarn. Uh, because cotton is the best yarn to use for kitchen items. I also want to mention that this yarn has 169 yards, so if you were to use one color, make sure that it has at least 169 yards, because if you were to make this whole dishcloth using one color, you might only have a little bit left. So if you want to use one color, that's what I would do. Something with at least 169 yards. You will also need a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And of course, a tapestry needle to weave in your ends and a pair of scissors. Now to get started with your main color, you're going to create a slip knot. You can do this however you like. This is my preferred way. Insert your hook and then you're going to chain 47. So yarn over, pull through. That's one, two, three, I'm just going to do a small swatch because I don't have enough yarn to make a whole second one. Um, but you go ahead and chain 47 and then once you're at that length, we're going to double crochet into our third chain from the hook. So we have one, two, three, insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that is a double crochet. If you are in the UK, this is known as a treble crochet. So in the US, this is a double. Now we're going to double crochet in each chain across. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So just continue double crocheting in each chain across. And if you feel at any point that this tutorial is going too fast, go ahead and adjust the playback speed by clicking the three dots or just the setting symbol and choosing 0.75 or lower to make the video go slower. So continue double crocheting in each chain and I will meet you at the end of this row. All right, so now you have one row of double crochet stitches. To move on to row two, you will chain two and turn your work. And now, instead of working at the tops of our stitches, we're going to work in between each post. So yarn over and insert your hook in between the first and second double crochet post. Yarn over and insert your hook into the post. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So we didn't work into the top of the stitch, we worked in between those posts. And we're gonna continue doing the same thing in between each post across. And I forgot to mention that at the end of row one, you should have 45 double crochet. So again, in between these posts, And this is what it starts to look like. 
So go ahead and repeat the same process all the way down the row, just double crocheting in between those posts. Now, once you reach the end of the row, you will come across your last stitch and the chain two or the two chains that we skipped on our foundation chain. You're going to place your last double crochet in between those two. Just like that. Now for row three, chain two and turn your work. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did in row two. We're going to double crochet in between each post, starting with the first two. So for rows three through five, you're going to repeat row two. So I will meet you at the end of row five. And remember that at the end of each row, you'll want to double crochet in between the last double crochet and the chain two of that row. So right in between those two. If you forget that part, then your work will start to go inward, and we don't want that. Make sure that you have 45 stitches in each row. Now I'll meet you at the end of row five. Now at the end of row five, this is what your work should start to look like. So we have row one, row two, row three, row four, and row five. Now we're going to add on our accent color. Now you can add yarn, a new color of yarn, any way that you prefer. For this pattern, I like to tie off my yarn. So I just go ahead and cut it and knot it. And then just add on a new color by creating a slip knot and pulling it through. That way I know for sure that my ends are secure, but of course do it however you like it. Um, so after you chain two, you'll turn your work and we're just gonna keep repeating the same process. So double crochet in between those posts and in between each post across. And so we're going to use this accent color for two rows. So I will meet you at the end of row, oh, I will meet you at the end of row seven. All right, so now we have two rows of our accent color, and then you're going to switch back to your main color again for one row. And so this is the point where I'm going to put this aside and show you the main project. So this is what your this is what you should have at this point. Um, so you're going to have five rows of your main color, then two rows of your accent color, one row main, two rows accent, one row main, four rows accent, one row, two, one, two, and then finish with five more rows of your main color. Then after that, we're going to create the border. So I'll go ahead and rip back this border really quick so I, so I can show you how to do that. And to create the border, we're just going to do all single crochet. So to do that, chain one and turn your work. And we're just going to single crochet across this row, but again, we're going to work in between the posts. So insert your hook in between those two posts Yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And just single crochet into the next, and into the next, just like you were doing with double crochet. So single crochet across this whole row, and I will meet you on the other side. Once you reach the end, I like to place three single crochet into this corner stitch here. So it's right between the last stitch and the chain two from the previous round. So three single crochet all into that corner to make it easier for us to turn our row. So this is what your row of single crochet should look like. And then we're going to turn our dishcloth to the side and work evenly along the side. Now because this whole dishcloth is made using double crochet, we're going to place two single crochet at the end of each double crochet row, and this will help make it an even border. So what we're going to do is crochet around this 
last double crochet of the row. So insert your hook around the post and just single crochet and then we'll put another one right next to it. So now we have two single crochet at the end of that row. And now here's the next row. And you don't have to make this perfect either. Just as long as you have the same amount of stitches on each side, like each, like this side and this side, then it won't look too crazy. And if it does, just pull your stitches back and try again. It, it really doesn't have to be perfect, but my general rule is two single crochet at the end of each double crochet row. So that's what I try to stick to. See, we have two, 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 two. We've done four rows of double crochet. You also might find it a whole lot easier to weave in these ends before you start the border because I found it a pain in the butt and they just kept getting in my way. So definitely weave these ends in first and then create your border if you want to make it a li little bit easier on yourself. So now I've reached the corner stitch again. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to place two single crochet around this last double crochet. And then I'm going to turn my work a little bit and put a third one in there. That way you have three single crochet in that corner. Now we'll turn all the way and now we're facing the foundation row. Uh, so we're working on the opposite side of our foundation row. And we're going to do the same thing that we did at the top by going in between each post because it makes it a whole lot easier to work your stitches in this way instead of going through the tightness of the foundation chain. So just repeat the same process, just single crocheting in between each post and I will meet you at the third corner. Now once you reach this corner again, we're just going to place three single crochet around that chain two, just like we did before. Turn your washcloth or dishcloth and single crochet the same way you did on the other side. So two single crochet around the end of each double crochet. And remember that this side should match the same amount that you did on this side, just so that it looks nice and even and it's not all scrunched together or, you know, uneven. <laughs> so I'll meet you at the end. Once you reach the end, you only need to put two single crochet around this last double crochet because you already have a single crochet at the top. So go ahead and put two there, then slip stitch to your first single crochet by inserting your hook, yarn over, pull that through, and through the loop on your hook. Then go ahead and cut your yarn, leaving a couple inches to weave, yarn over, and pull that strand all the way through, and pull to tighten. So that's how you make your double crochet dishcloth. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and check out some other free patterns and beginner tips that I have here on my channel. Subscribe if you want to get all of the latest videos. I'll see you in the next one. Sigoni, Sigoni, how's your macaroni?